After we've constructed the balloon framed gable end wall we discussed in episode 4, we're ready to move on to the more standard construction of the other three walls. These walls consist of 2x4 framing. There was one bottom plate, wall studs at 16 inches and 24 inches on center, and two top plates that carry the load of the roof. There's one load bearing header over the double door and two non load bearing headers over the other openings. For wall sheathing on the back wall, we are using a 3 8 inch thick product that has an enamel coating that doubles as our siding. For the other two walls, we are using a 7 16 sheathing product that incorporates a weather barrier which replaces the house wrap. To calculate the length of the wall studs, I take the overall height of the wall and subtract the thicknesses of the top and bottom plates. Instead of cutting each wall stud separately, I prefer to line them up on edge and gang cut them with my Bigfoot saw attachment. Once the studs and plates are cut, I use the flat surface of the shed floor to build the walls. I begin by marking the stud locations on both the top and bottom plate at the same time for efficiency and accuracy. Each end of the stud is secured to the plates with two through nails. Then we fasten the double top plate at each stud location, remembering to hold it back three and a half inches to allow the top plate of the adjoining gable end wall to lap over and make a secure connection. Fasten the double top plate at each stud location. I tack the bottom plate to the floor using a small six penny nail to prevent the plate from moving while we square the wall. 141 and an eighth. Yep, that's square. As we mentioned, we're using a combined sheathing and siding product for the back wall. And overhang it three and a half. At the end of the wall, we let the siding hang over three and a half inches to cover the stud of the adjacent gable end wall. At the bottom of the wall, where the siding hangs over the floor framing, I measure up and mark the bottom plate location to ensure that every nail hits home. I use adhesive at the seams to secure and seal the panels where they lap. Strengthening up the joint and trying to make it a little more waterproof. Yep. I'm holding this up because this stuff, that's good where it is up there. Okay. Whoop, whoop. Okay. Got it. Watch the nails. Yep. Somebody and watch. There's it. only one. Let's go up pretty quick. Come yep. on. I'm all set. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna push it. Yep. All right. You got yep. it? I'll hold it. Okay, now I'm gonna go around and push it in. You are stronger than the incredible Hulk. There you go, you're on it. Okay, go ahead. Once lifted and in place, secure the wall to the floor at each stud location and also to the adjoining wall. All right, now we just have to put a little tape to help seal the outside, put the corner board on and we're done. God forbid we don't build this sturdy enough and the wind comes and blows it down. For the front wall double door opening, we'll use a load bearing header to support the weight of the roof trusses. We decided on a five foot wide opening, so we'll make our header five feet wide plus one and a half inches on either side to allow for the thickness of the jack studs. The header consists of half inch sheathing sandwiched between two two by fours on edge cut to length. To support the header, Two jack studs or trimmer studs are cut to fit from the bottom of the header to the bottom plate. To make things easier, nail these to the king studs prior to wall assembly. Five feet, right? Yep. Small blocks, or cripples, 
are placed above the header at the typical stud locations. Well, you smell that? Somebody's cooking lobster on the grill. I smell that. Is that lobster shanty anywhere nearby here? To avoid the need for load-bearing headers, the windows in the shed were sized to fit between studs two foot on center. All that's required are single header and sill studs above and below the window. With such a large door opening in this wall, it's impractical to sheath the entire wall before we lift it. Instead, we square the wall and attach one sheet. We'll infill the rest of the sheathing after the wall is in place. Sorry. I'm, doing everything. I'm all thumbs. But before we raise the wall, we trim the sheathing around the door and window locations. This is a handy trick. Use the circular saw as a dust blower to keep the dust out of your eyes when you lift the wall. Pull it. Pull it to us. Pull it. Pull it. Keep going. Yep. Good. Now up. Got it. To me. To you. To you. It could come in a touch. While Mac and fills the sheathing on that wall, I jump ahead and frame the last wall. I frame the wall just like the others, but add a rough opening for a door that I purchased at the local home store. Doing all that bouncy hammering. The opening is centered in the wall and gets a non-bearing header, like the window in the adjacent wall. A good trick for hammering in tight spaces is to use the side or cheek of your hammerhead to start the nail. Another good hammer trick is to use the claw to countersink the nails at the door locations. The double top plate ties the end wall to the adjacent walls. Secure the top plate with nails located above each stud. Okay. Say when. When are you going to push? Hold it. Good. Hold it right there. This time, hold it there. Before applying the sheathing, square embrace the wall. Keep holding it. Okay. All right. Did you check it? Perfect. Here, we use a scrap tacked to the top plate to ensure the sheathing aligns. The last step is to remove the bottom plate and the door openings. This can be done with a hand saw, but it's much easier to use a reciprocating saw. Mm -hmm.